next verse i love verse 12 for i will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities will i remember no more now the word remember no more in the greek is the word mimnesco m-i-m-n-e-s-k-o mimnesco it means i will not put it to mind I will remember no more means I will not put it to mind. Mimnesco. It doesn't mean I won't see it, but it means I will not take it to heart. I will not take it to mind. I will not refer to it in our discussion. I will not refer to it. I'm not going to use it to relate with them. Mimnesco. I'm not going to use it to relate with them that's the new covenant because the new covenant reveals the true character of god the new covenant reveals the true character of god that's very important please pay attention the new covenant reveals the true character of god look at hebrews chapter 8 verse 13 in that he saith a new covenant he hath made the first old. Now, that which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away. The word old is the word obsolete. Is the Greek word paleo. P-A-L-A-I-O-O. -O. It means useless. He makes it useless. Like Hebrews 1.11. He makes it useless then there's another word there ready to vanish ready to vanish the word vanish in the greek is to obliterate that is he makes it not exist again he makes the first covenant not exist again so the only thing god murders or destroys is the law he murders and destroys the law he takes away the first that he may establish the second he takes away the first that he may establish the second so in the contrast of the old covenant and the new we have god giving out the old covenant to do a murder going out of the old covenant to do a murder in the death of his son he kills the law in the death of his son he deals with condemnation in the death of his son he sacrifices the law to nobody he renders the law absolute the word absolute is the word paleo it means out of use and you know many people are using absolute things today in so many churches <laughs> the things that are no more of use <laughs> the things about the old covenant is that it is still written that's the thing about it you will still read it but you are reading something that is obsolete it has no effect not because god made it have effect at all god is the one that made it not have effect again so god kills the old covenant destroys the old covenant that means he makes it useless with the death of jesus to put the law side by side with the death of Jesus and his sacrifice is an insult of the highest order. To put the law side by side with the sacrificial work of Christ is the highest dishonor ever. What Christ did was too perfect that the law cannot be brought to bear where the sacrifice of Christ is. Because the work of Jesus was to render the law useless someone said to me the old testament was given to balance the new testament <laughs> that's a laugh that's a laugh right that the old testament was given to balance you know people like to balance balance it when they are telling you balance it what they are saying is bring works and use it to perfect what christ has done these people like to talk balance they are very dishonorable 
they do not have faith in what christ has done they do not believe that jesus did a perfect job they don't believe in it they don't believe because otherwise if they believe that what jesus did was perfect they won't be looking for balance because it is truth because it is balanced in itself jesus is the truth because jesus himself is balanced that's why jesus alone is enough jesus minus nothing in calls to everything jesus plus something equals to nothing jesus is a stand alone he is the truth he is not some of the truth he is the totality of truth so what he did was perfect complete balanced and totally whole in itself i have faith in the totality of what christ did somebody shout hallelujah so jesus makes the old testament useless by his death in hebrews chapter 12 he now says that there's a voice that will shake the things of the earth look at it again hebrews 12 26 please pay attention whose voice then shook the earth but now he had promised saying yet once more i shake not the earth only but also heaven next verse and this word yet once more signify it the removing of those things that are shaken as of things that are made that those things which cannot be shaken may remain it will take away the things that are shaken what are the things that are shaken the law it will shake the law and take it away and what will remain will be the new covenant it will shake off the law and the new covenant will remain look at verse 28 glory to god wherefore we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved let us have grace whereby we may serve god acceptably with reverence and godly fear we may serve god whose kingdom cannot be moved how did he get the kingdom of course the kingdom of jesus how did he get the kingdom when he died and rose again and sat down at the right hand of majesty on high that's his kingdom and it is that resurrection that dealt with the law that's what dealt with condemnation and that's what dealt with sin we have received that kingdom today hallelujah look at verse 28 oh glory to god hebrews 12 28 wherefore we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved let us have grace let us have what grace that we may serve god acceptably with reverence and godly fear let us have grace then he mentions godly fear godly fear is not tormenting fear godly fear is reverence for god what's the reverence we have of god the reverence we have for god is that he has dealt with the law so we cannot practice the law we not practicing the law is a reverence to god our reverence is that he has dealt with condemnation so we will not tolerate condemnation that's our reverence he has given us the forgiveness of sins so we will not be peddling sins around that's our reverence for god he has given the sacrifice of sin forever now look at verse 29 for our god is a consuming fire what did he consume the law what did he consume the old covenant what did he consume he took away condemnation he takes away the dictates of the law he is a consuming fire with that understanding we remain grateful when we say our god is a consuming fire it's a celebration of gratitude for what he has done in dealing with the law dealing with sin dealing with guilt dealing with condemnation and freeing us in his righteousness glory to god his fire is his love for us that consuming fire is god's love for us 
so when you read scriptures like that you have to patiently look at the context very well so when we see the consuming fire we see that consuming fire in the death burial and resurrection of jesus